Okay, great. Um, it's about five after, so I think we can get started today. Um, so thanks everybody for coming to the CNF working group uh, meeting. If this is not the meeting you're expected. Uh, please feel free to jump out right now. Um, the other thing, this session uh, is being uh, recorded. So just be aware if you come like voice something or say something on camera, it will be on YouTube after this. Um, so the link to the meeting notes are in uh, the chat. Uh, please feel free to add your name so we can uh, know who's uh, discussing things today. Um, so the first thing um, I just want to point out again, this is a new working group. So we do have an overview deck for anybody um, that's new today. Please feel free to jump in and join there. Um, the second thing that I'd like to um, point out, uh, or I guess on the overview, some of the pe some people were on the uh, CNCF uh, telecom user group. So the TOG call right before this. Um, and just in case you weren't on that, um, there is a difference between the two groups. Uh, the TOG is going to be more of an industry-wide discussion on broader topics of challenges facing the industry. We're going to have more like white papers coming out of that. Well, this group is kind of more focused on a narrow set of problems and trying to accomplish something um, more in, in the short term um, and like have results around some specific issues outlined in our charter. Um, and we will be kind of having a discussion about that later uh, with a presentation from Frederick, and I believe he's on the call. Um, so jumping off of that, um, if you haven't, uh, if you're not in the CNF Working Group Slack channel um, on the CNCF Slack, you're really missing out. It's been extremely active over the past week. Um, and so thank you for everybody that's contributing to the discussion. I think there's been some great discussion there. And I think kind of a summary of that will be presented in uh, Frederick's proposal for the initial framework that we have. So I think that discussion has really uh, sparked some good ideas. Um, the second part, um, thank you to Swisscom and Deutsche Telekom for adding their interest to the charter. Um, please feel free to add this to the charter, um, to add your company as interested to the charter. Now, why this is important um, is because as we're trying to set up like a formal governance uh, under the CNCF, we need to know who like the interested parties. So then we, when we go before the technical oversight committee, we can show them that there are enough parties interested in this and who those parties are. So the technical oversight committee just wants to know who's interested in the different initiatives. So if your company is interested, um, please feel free to um, add your company as an interested party there. Um, the, the next part, is I'd like to just kind of point out like two changes in the GitHub um, repo that happened since our meeting last week. Um, so to follow up on our conversation around should it be like conformance and requirements or best practices, uh, we've changed a lot of the wording to uh, best practices uh, rather than saying conformance. Um, and so thanks Taylor for making that change uh, more details in uh, the merge GitHub issue or GitHub pull request. And the second part is adding into the charter, um, providing a list of cloud native benefits as uh, a, a best practice provides. So that's a, another thing that has been added into the charter, right? Uh, this is an open source community. So if there's anything <laughs> that you'd like to add, please feel free to open a pull request or open an issue. Uh, against the charter or anything in the repo. Um, with that, Taylor, do you want to talk a little bit about the TOG and CNF working group roles? I saw that you just added that. Um, I don't think I added that. Uh, okay, so somebody else did. Okay, so. <laughs> I it, but I mean, it's good. I mean, so that you kind of went over it at the start. And I, the, the main thing is, um, we want to both have a place where we can have more open discussions to cover um, as much and as many concerns that uh, service providers and vendors and everybody in the telco domain and Kubernetes can come together. And, um, and then we also want to make sure that we have a, a place where people can come together and know that we're moving forward on on something that has been decided. 
So there's kind of two audiences, and I think uh, Daniel Bernay uh, from Bell Canada and um, Vuk uh, from Deutsche Telkom have both kind of talked about this in the CNF working group. The audience for the CNF uh, in the CNF working group Slack channel, the audience that we're looking at for the CNF working group are people that are already wanting to adopt um, cloud native and let's say Kubernetes based uh, platforms and technologies and really looking to say, how can we most efficiently use these? How do we, we either already understand or lack a lot of these philosophies and methodologies or we're starting to want and we're starting to want to adopt more so you could be anywhere along the transition or the the bell curve um, for adoption but those that, that are already bought in and then the telecom user group would be the place where we want to have discussions about things that may not be covered yet maybe it's something that isn't um, covered yet in Kubernetes, but it's a need within um, the telco industry. Or maybe there's so many options that there hasn't really been consensus within the community about those things. Or alternatives that just maybe don't even look like anything that's there yet. So that's really what the telco user group's about. And the presentation today for those that um, didn't see it one of the main items was something that Jeffrey Salins uh, was talking about the telco drivers and concerns so we're hoping to go ahead and resurface a white paper that he started uh, last year and gather that information so this is a lot of the questions that people have put in what are our motivations why are we putting stuff about um, Kubernetes best practices for CNFs, like why are we talking about this if we don't know the motivations? Um, that's why we put the little benefits in the, the scope for the charter. We added that, but we don't want it to be the main focus within the CNF working group. We're not trying to say, is this relevant at all? The CNF working group is actually the place where people go, we know it's relevant. Help us to actually find the best ways to utilize these. Here's a specific network function that we're using and we're trying to figure out the best way that we can um, manage it, the lifecycle management and those sort of things. In the telecom user group though, we can go deep into those drivers and all the whys and source that information as it becomes available into the work, the CNF working group as well as other groups. So I'm, I'm the test suite itself, I mean, being able to have more context, the CNF testbed, another initiative can utilize any of those things, as well as other groups like uh, Anikit with the reference architecture and reference implementation that they're doing on Kubernetes. And um, so I'm hope, I hope that that provides like some context and we wanna make sure there's a place for the questions and comments and discussions that have been coming up uh, specifically in the CNF work group, but same, uh, sometimes they go out of scope. Yeah, thanks. I'd, I'd like to open for feedback to um, Bill and try to see if if anyone has any thoughts or discussions around this like roles and scope that we're talking about for the CNF working group. And you may Bill want to even bring up the charter itself. Um, for those who haven't looked at it lately so that we can see what is the new version based on all the different updates. But if I'd, I'd like to get feedback if, if people's thoughts and stuff on there's an understanding on what are we focusing on first and where can we talk about uh, things that'll help the telco community? Hi Taylor, it's uh, Tom here. Hey Tom. How you doing? Um, I think looking at the Slack over the past few days, the biggest query that seems to be in people's minds is where do we write down the business requirements that's driving all three communities? Um, and I think it would be 
it would be good if there's a kind of an agreement, understanding, whatever, as to which of the three communities that level of thing needs to land. Because I think it would it would it wouldn't be suboptimal to try and write it down in each community. Um, and and so it'd be interesting to get people's opinion on which community that would be a good place to source that information. All right. Um, well, um, I guess there's there's kind of two parts to it that I, I'm saying. Um, probably the telecom user group is a place to have business requirements that are available for any different group or community, including those outside of CNCF, and make it available to anybody. Um, so telco business requirements. And then um, specifically for the CNF working group, if you look at the, um, the best practice proposals, which thanks Bill for bringing them up. So the best practice proposals, one of the things that's in the template, what we're expecting is for people to provide references and motivation behind stuff. So if, you sh if you're proposing, here is a best practice that we think a CNF would be good to follow. That's all we're saying with these best practices. They're not gonna to apply to every CNF because not everything is going to be implementable. But for the ones that are, here's ideally a way that the, app, the telco application being developed can best utilize um, and consume the capabilities and services within Kubernetes. And one of the things that they should have in the proposal is what are the underlying um, business driver? And it may be that, um, so this is the, the one part that may be a little off from what you were saying, Tom. Yeah, ideally it would be in one place. I don't think that's ever gonna fully be the case, especially distributed and everything else group. And what, what could happen though, is you may end up where someone is working on a proposal and they're thinking about existing uh, application and starting to talk about how would this be done following best practices um, for Kubernetes, like a Kubernetes native. And they may come up with that business requirement and they write it in. Maybe they're talking to you, Tom, and they're like working it out and they're like, here is the background business requirement. I would hope that at that point, we could also push it back to the tug and then maybe it makes it to a larger source. And the, whenever you're reading this proposal and you're looking here and going, okay, here's, here's the best practice and it has this requirement. And then it says, go see here for more details. So some of them may have a massive amount of uh, context around a business requirement. Others could be short. That's kind of how I'm seeing it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, thanks. One thing I wanna like throw into the mix too is um, the vast majority of us, and we've talked about it from like the, you know, CSP perspective, right? Like telcos, cable providers, um, internet service providers. But I think long-term um, just network operators in general um, are gonna care about this stuff. So my personal opinion is, is within the tug, I would like people like you, Bernier, um, et cetera, to help me get telco specific business requirements that we would then push into this group and say, this is what we're hoping to get out of here. Cause what I'm worried about is if we were to build them say in here, um, then it's gonna become, which we've seen, we've been really notoriously bad at doing this in LFN is the telcos come in and we shove our paradigm down everybody's throat. And then the Bank of the Americas of the world, you know, the Disney's, the Cokes that like run massive, massive networks are trying to, um, you know, figure stuff out. Um, additionally, too, it's been brought up by multiple people, myself included, that we're hoping to get some of the big um, public cloud providers in here. And I would really like to see some of their requirements pop up into some of these individual proposals. But I know I've been the biggest one harping on, we need to design to requirements. I want requirements in them. Um, I specifically, the selfish part of me wants telco cable specific requirements. So um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the tug, but I would like us as providers to go into one of the forums that's specifically geared towards us for us to capture our requirements and then push those into some of these, you know, more 
cross organizational cross domain teams so that way our voice is heard but we're also not drowning out maybe some of the good ideas that would come from like the pure app dev side the public cloud side the enterprise side etc so hello guys this is ravi um, so i think requirement may be an uh, an overused term so i do understand that requirements can come from the cncf tilk user group I know there are some requirements coming from the CNTT uh, before, and there's certainly a few requirements in there. But maybe what we really need here is kind of principles that we know that are very important, and maybe trying to understand what are the business, uh, principle foundations that will make this work important. Not necessarily frame it as a business requirement or a technical requirement. Certainly, what do we consider a successful program here? What are the principles that we live by? Um, if you've got, I mean, that is, you might just be right that requirement is an overused word, but you know, a requirement is, really a, is theoretically here a thing that you need in order to be successful. So, you know, what you're calling a principle in, in traditional software engineering, we would call a requirement, I think. Big thing is, is I want to know what we're using to measure stuff. If we go out and make the bold claim as a group of collaborators that this is a best practice, how did we validate and measure that best practice to say it is actually better than what we had before? That it does do something that we needed to do and that we're not just doing it because we're a bunch of nerds who like to geek out on, you know, cool Linux tech. So, so this is Sukhdev. So isn't that something which CNTP is doing? So in RA2, they are defining the requirement. In RI2, they are implementing them. And in RC2, they are actually testing for conformance against these requirements. So, so all of that is being discussed. So, uh, and, and they do work with CNCF TUG. So why do we need to redo all of that here, why not take it work in conjunction with CNTT RA2 and, and, and see what's missing, what, and that's strictly being driven by telcos and, and why not bring other players like you mentioned, Jeff, uh, the cloud providers and, and the Bank of Americas and whatnot in there and see, look at it, what, what, what pieces are missing and rather than Re redoing the, all of that here, take what's there and then figure it out what's missing and what we need to do here. So rather than re resetting everything, I mean, this is crazy that every other year or every year we just fork off a new group and just for fun of it, we start all over again. There's no point in doing that. And so so why not we look at it? Uh, has, uh, is everybody here familiar with uh, CNTT RA2 and have they looked at it, what requirements are there? And also the RM, the resource, man uh, uh, resource modeling, which is, which is going on in CNTT, which is defining it at an abstract level. Perhaps those are the things to be looked at to start with. So uh, I think I, I agree we should we should look at them. So certainly from my point of view, RA2, I've been trying to keep very focused on the requirements relating to the interfaces that an application needs from the infrastructure, which I think is quite a functional set of requirements. Whereas I think when we're talking about business requirements, we're likely to be talking more non-functional stuff, which I've purposefully not been capturing in RA2 because yeah, that, wasn't, that wasn't the scope of CNTT at the start. Yeah, so let's be let, let me try to address Let me try to address this directly because this has come up um, several times before and it's also, it's not just if we look at um, the CNTT or Anikit work, um, it's also other groups, this can come up again. So why are we creating something new? That's the question. And um, I wish Daniel was on here because he said this. Um, I mentioned again, I don't, I don't think you saw this, Vuk. You, you, you've kind of mentioned this. The audience that the CNF working group is focused on, and to some extent, the telecom user group is different. It's a different audience. 
So there's not a one size fit all. LFN doesn't do it every, um, have something that fits everything. CNCF doesn't have something. There's other groups out there that are, um, that are doing stuff outside of LF as well. But CNCF is focused on, on a specific type of audience. Those that are um, wanting to adopt the philosophies and methodologies that are behind cloud native. So, and specifically the ones, if you look at CNCF or CELFN, CNCF is about um, showing and highlighting various options. You could think of it more a la carte. You could go in and say, here's how they fit together and try to promote interoperability between them, but they're not being opinionated. LFN is for an audience that says we need something, we want, prefer something that's opinionated. We want something also that's maybe a little bit, um, it's going to uh, be more focused on supporting integration between different groups outside and philosophies. So if you look at RA2 and the RA2 and all everything designed from that, it's supposed to work with specific um, opinions on how things should should uh, both be operated and and uh, work in production, and that's good for the audiences that want that. Then you can go there and you have that. That's not going to be what you would look at if you, if you if something came out of um, a totally different group out of LF, you have other groups that are coming up with other platforms and ideas, which may be very useful for a service provider. And vendors may say, this fits our, our model. So the CNCF and specifically the CNF working group is trying to provide something that's following the philosophies that are within the Kubernetes and cloud native community and that fits the best, the most efficiently to Kubernetes. That's not going to be a match to what um, comes out of CNTT. So they should be two I, options, by the way. They are two options because there are two different audiences that they're both trying to talk to. Um, Tom, can, can, I, can I take that point up about audiences a second? Um, um, can I? Ian, before you do that, let's let Vuk respond because I've called him out twice and I'd like for him to be able to comment since I was pointing to um, something he's talked about in the Slack. Um, thanks, Taylor. Um, I um, am struggling a bit um, uh, like to, to, to reconcile the things um, between the starting point um, where we discussed about the conformance or idea of achieving certain uh, a framework of, of conformance testing where we can prove different types of CNFs if they are conformant to something that we are hopefully about to agree uh, as, a, as a cloud native and the discussion with the, with the best practices. So uh, the, the, let's say the, the biggest interest uh, uh, or biggest value that, that uh, we could see out of such working group that is focused on really making things fit to Kubernetes or creating a set of practices and, and, uh, and uh, um, uh, even recommendations for the conformance uh, that would make a CNFs work uh, in, a, in a Kubernetes in a native, unopinionated or uh, a very uh, 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 little opinionated uh, uh, Kubernetes as a value for us. So that, that, would be, that would be something um, where we hoped okay, as a telecom user who is uh, deploying their own upstream-based Kubernetes, uh, we will not be in a constant struggle uh, with different vendors who are preferring opinionated setups, uh, if you follow um, what I want to uh, say. So if we are now moving away from that, I see the discussions in uh, different uh, Linux Foundation working groups uh, simply like, as, as Taylor said, too opinionated. And we were hoping something that could be a conformance against the generic Kubernetes cloud native platform. So I don't know how, how we can reconcile these two things here. 
Yeah, I, I think that uh, this is Frederick, by, by the way. So I, I think part of what we need to look at as well is uh, separate out some of the some of the layers because there's the concept like from what actor you're coming from, what what type of thing that you want to do. So if you're a consumer, you're not a telecom, but you're you're a consumer of this world. Uh, you're likely not going to care about like, is it a CNF or a VNF? You care that there's an API that it meets certain uh, both functional and non-functional requirements and you can call it and consume it in, a, in, ex, in an explicit way. Uh, as the operator of this, uh, you care very much about how this thing is, is, is ran and operated. And one of the problems that's been expressed by multiple uh, by multiple operators is that you have a very rich set of things underneath of you that you need to control and, and manage. And how do you produce this environment that is uh, that you're not, you're not you're minimizing as much complexity and trying to give something that's a little bit more uniform to to basically run a command and control over your over your infrastructure. When if you're the vendor. There's two type, at least two types of vendors, uh, major ones that we've seen. The first one is from an infrastructure pr uh, provider. How do I build an infrastructure that you can run these things on uh, following a common set of, of rules, which uh, CNTT is very heavily focused on uh, among others. And the final portion on that is like you're a vendor of a CNF. How do you deploy into, uh, into a CNF infrastructure environment? And so part of the problems that we, that we ran into is that we've had, uh, we've tried to focus on too much in, in many of these groups rather than saying, okay, well, what are, what are some of these things at its core? And then how do we get these communities to interact with each other? Uh, because then what ends up happening is that whoever has a loudest voice in, uh, if, you, if, if in the larger community ends up uh, being the primary uh, speaker at the expense at the expense of others. So, by providing a, a smaller forum that we can say, okay, like what are the best practices of running in a in in a Kubernetes environment? And that doesn't mean that OpenStack is any less important or PNFs are any less important. We still have to work out how to integrate all these things together. But for the purposes of this particular group, uh, I I I, th I think the the initial focus should be very tight and saying how do we how do we get something to run in in kubernetes how do we get something to to say like this is how to how to op, how to operate it in kubernetes and then we'll we'll work out uh, and share this information uh, from best practices and it doesn't mean that you have to follow these these rules exactly the market will decide what works and what doesn't what is important or not important but uh, to be able to say these are the best practices you need in order to in, in order to move forward so th those are some of my thoughts that, that I that I have. Uh, certainly, uh, there I, I know they'll be insufficient. Uh, so I'm hoping that others can help uh, fill in or tell me where where I where I'm wrong as well. I, I'll just maybe uh, uh, two more, more minutes uh, try to get it uh, or, or to throw it uh, in the round a bit more pragmatic, uh, and uh, uh, then the round could decide is it something. Uh, relevant for this uh, working group, or maybe uh, just half away re relevant. Uh, the thing is, um, as we are working with the many, many uh, application developers, vendors uh, of CNFs like Ericsson's, Nokia's, Mavenir's, uh, Cisco's of the world, many other smaller ones, um, uh, we are getting now to a situation that everybody has something like a called cloud native or uh, let's say containerized applications, network functions of different kinds. But each one has a, has a caveat. Uh, yeah, but the best way to run this platform or to this application is if you take uh, Nokia, what they call CAS container as a service or, or Kubernetes uh, essentially platform, or if you take Ericsson's, or if you take uh, this one, or if you take that one, and then as an as a operator who runs uh, uh, dozens of network functions, you're faced in a situation that uh, you have a cloud native platform on one side, you have a, 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 a huge scale that public cloud providers are achieving and having only one type of, let's say, parameterizable and, and configurable platform. Uh, and uh, then uh, um, you cannot use that because simply the CNFs are 
using uh, uh, patterns and developments uh, and uh, practices that they tie you into certain very opinionated frame, uh, which I believe is nothing uh, um, um, that's uh, efficient for, for the future. So what we are looking kind of to get is, could we establish one uh, uh, basic foundation, uh, cloud native, upstream based, that every cloud native network function can be conformant uh, mm -hmm. to and can uh, uh, work uh, better or worse. So this is a question of performance in that one generic cloud uh, uh, native platform. This is not what's happening. And I don't know that the roots of, of that, is it in the practices or is it in, uh, you know, a different uh, type of understanding what cloud native is, but it always goes in a very, very opinionated directions. And then you can have a, a cloud native platform per network function, uh, probably, or per network function vendor in order to make it work. So that's what I wanted to try to throw as a, as a business problem, as a business requirement. We want to have a one platform that is, you know, cloud native mm -hmm. enough, uh, flexible enough to cover multiple network functions running on the same. From multiple so, vendors. but um, I, I think that's because you're getting exactly what you ask for, but you're not asking for what you want. Um, cloud native, we're, we're using it to mean a lot of different things. Um, but applications are cloud native, platforms are not cloud native. Um, and these applications are, you know, designed to be run on a cloud in that sense, they're cloud native. And you're asking them to, you know, apply or align with a bunch of rules, like for instance, immutability, um, which they absolutely do, which is what your vendors are telling you. But what you actually want is something that's consumable in your DevOps environment, that aspect of cloud native, the thing that you see from the outside of the CNF, not the, are these containers designed and run by, you know, orchestrated in a way that would suggest they're cloud native, because ultimately that doesn't matter to you so much. Uh, it matters that you can consume the result, um, that it aligns with continuous testing and then automatic deployment. At no point will you find a cloud native definition that says must deploy with one API call or one click, although it's a perfectly reasonable thing to want and ask for. Um, and it is, you know, strongly aligned with cloud native principles. But I think that is what you want, if I understand what you're saying. And that's why I keep saying I want to bring this back to audiences, because we want to assign why we're doing something to a group that cares. Um, and a lot of cloud native principles are designed so that the group that cares is the developer of an application because Kubernetes itself is very application developer centric. It's trying to make applications easy to develop because a lot of people that use Kubernetes develop applications that they then run. That's not the model we're on here. We're on a model here where we've got service providers in particular are most focused, I'm not saying they're exclusively focused, but they're most focused on uh, operating um, an environment, including CNFs, and on making sure those CNFs can be architected to within their network. The development side of things is more on the vendor side of things, not exclusively again, but vendors are more interested in making sure that cloud native development principles, which typically apply to application developers are helping them and that they can police their um, development teams to ensure that where a cloud native development principle is significant enough, they want to ensure it's present. So the thing about audiences, I think, is that it's not just one sided. We have actually about three, maybe four audiences, if you consider what the platform must provide to allow a CNF to get its job done. Um, and if we have those four audiences, are we representing all of them properly? And or alternatively, if we're saying this is done in the TUG, or if we're saying this has been done in the CNCF, do either of the sets of requirements there have a justification that says this is the audience that cares and this is why they care? Yeah, so one other one other point of context as well is that we have to realize that by running on top of Kubernetes and part of the reason for the best practice this year is also to determine what gaps are there in, in running 
uh, in this space. And uh, we have to consider the, the ecosystem at large. So Kubernetes does not run in a, in a vacuum. It, it's certainly not a, a telecom only thing. So the majority of use cases of Kubernetes is uh, relatively small clusters, small to medium sized clusters in the enterprise space. And so any, any gaps that we find, any changes, we have to be thoughtful of those communities because if we're not, then any proposals we make are gonna be squashed. And so in, in the process of, of navigating that, we also have this larger ecosystem we need to make sure that we, that we navigate. So not every audience that we talk about here is gonna be the sole audience that we need to, to think and care about. Yeah, thanks everyone. I, I think we're starting to now uh, potentially overuse the word audience. Um, so I, I don't know what should be there instead or, or an, uh, an, an additional one. So well, there, if you were talking agile, the term we're looking for here is actor. An actor. Okay. So the, Frederick, you, you had some slides about uh, that uses actor too. So the actors, that sounds fine. And then whether the other part is within the actors or the roles, um, those type of people, the personas, whatever, you're going to then have people that have maybe uh, different preferences. So you can have someone that's on an ops team, but they don't care anything at all about cloud native. Maybe they're doing embedded software or so, I don't know, whatever it is, you're doing an ops team on a submarine and not following anything about agile or DevOps, they don't care. So there's the persona or actor. And then what's important to narrow down is what is the CNF working group? It's not, or the tag, or what is it in CNCF or LFN or any of those? It's gonna be a subset of those actors. So the, within the, the, at least within CNCF telecom, both the platform and applications running on it. And there is, a, there is a blur, as you've said, Ian, because Kubernetes is application centric, but the, the philosophies behind what's cloud native are going all the way down the stack. So within, within the greater telecom CNCF community, there's, we care from, you could say from hardware all the way up. It doesn't mean it's always covered at all. There can be gaps all over but you care about how they could be layered up. For sure from the, what we, the Kubernetes infra and each layer up above as they integrate. So within the CNF working group, the, the comments earlier were about how do we have something, um, and Frederick, you were talking a little bit about this. How do we move something forward that we do agree to for that subset of actors that say we want something We've, we've decided we do want to utilize Kubernetes. We're not trying to bit bought in. Those discussions are happening in the tug or somewhere else. We are now at a point where we're trying to see how do we best utilize these for our telco concerns as a ops team, as a, a developer, as whatever the, you know, you, you have four different audiences in and I think um, are actors and Frederick, you have a few as well. Whatever yeah. you are, what we're talking about is those actors that actually want to try to utilize Kubernetes, you could say Kubernetes native, as an implementation of methodologies and principles that are more general. That's what we're currently looking at as a focus point. And it could, I think it will expand beyond application and probably get into infrastructure within the CNF work group but we're wanting a starting point so that we can focus. Um, it doesn't mean we don't need the drivers. It doesn't mean that we don't want the general purpose. What are those things behind it? It's those can happen concurrently. It's, it would be, what do you want to focus on? And right now we're saying let's within those CNF working group, let's focus on a more narrow specific. Yeah. So I, I think that, no, so I, I think Frederick has um, a presentation that'll, uh, as Jeffrey said, I think we're like spiraling a little bit that'll help us like focus the discussion. So Frederick, are you on the on the call and would be willing to share the slides that you prepped? 
Sure. So I I'll, can keep, stop I'll keep it short. Sure, I will keep it short as well. Okay, so uh, my the thing that I wanted to focus on specifically is if we have the charter, uh, what is a what is a model that can that we can build underneath of that charter, and what can we carve out? We want to start off with something that's that's relatively small, and that doesn't mean it's the only thing we focus on, but it's the first small thing that I propose that we that we try to focus on. Um, and so back onto the problem scope, we've spoken a lot about this, so I won't spend too much time. Um, I, but I will say this, earlier models focus primarily on what is a cloud native? What does it mean to be a cloud native network function? I would say these are very important questions to answer and this is likely the wrong forum. Uh, this is something that we wanna bring into the telecom user group and other forums. Uh, we do want to take into consideration on whether we are following cloud native to the best of our understanding because there's no single definition that's, uh, that's really ever settled. Uh, but at the same time, we, we don't want to spiral down the uh, philosophical uh, ex example of, or the philosophical question of what is, what is cloud native. Um, instead, I think we should look at, uh, at a, a few questions. What are, what are we really trying to do uh, with a focus on, on, val on value there? And also the question is value, value for who? And these are things that we can explore as, as we move forward. Uh, a couple straw man uh, things to consider in that is there's a, there's a push for automation. And automation means that you're able to do things like auto healing, you're able to, um, to auto provision, uh, auto replace things. Um, this also means that you can potentially, uh, it ties into other things like composability and, and reducing vendor lock-in. Uh, where you could have something like maybe you're running uh, a, a firewall from a certain vendor. It could be like Cisco or Palo, or Palo Alto, and you want to you want to change to the other. Uh, what what is this, what are we th thinking about scalability? In fact, is scalability even a, a, an issue? Do we, is that something we want to focus uh, focus on? And uh, try to tie these down to to values. Now, the assumption that I think we're making here as a community is that most of these costs are driven by OPEX. This is something very uh, important to consider as well, because if the costs are OPEX, then we're going to take a specific approach. But if most of the costs we're trying to reduce are CAPEX, then we have a very different set of conversations that we need to have. And so one of the things to ask yourself is, is are we focusing on the right things from a financial perspective? Um, and how do we reduce complexity in, in the running infrastructure? Um, and value for who? Because in the best case, uh, the value chain benefits everyone. It should not be a, a push and pull against like operator versus vendor versus uh, versus the company that comes in who's contracted to manage. Uh, it needs to be something that is that is that that's value add for for all and for the best chance for for these efforts to succeed. And if we're not seeing value for everyone, then we really should ask what can we do to to bring that in. Uh, but again, many of these questions are not for here, but they're things to consider because they can derail such, uh, such efforts. So um, let's separate out, uh, how do I consume from the operational details? Uh, and so a few actors that we can look at, and these, these may be too many or too little things. Are, so these are uh, more, some of the things we're going to look at, but we have the group who's going to consume it. We have the CNF vendor, the, the CNF operator. Again, repeat those same things on the CNF infra side, uh, who provides the infra, who operates the infra, uh, and what, what other actors are, are there in as well. And there's certainly some, like there'll be some in terms of uh, perhaps storage or, or others that we can eventually consider. But, uh, but I think if we focus on, on these ones as, as an initial set, then that may help us form some of our, some of our opinions. And uh, the, the thing that I think we should focus as a community, these are all important questions, but I think the one we should focus on the community primarily is around what, is, what does it mean to be a CNF in Kubernetes? Uh, how, do I, how do I build and deploy something? What are best practices? And the reason 
I'm not saying the others are not important questions, but very specifically, uh, we, we start we start here with uh, informed by how do I how do I operate this particular system, and this gives us the gives us something small that we can that we can produce in a relatively short amount of time to help us gain that momentum because that this is this is like what what I what I tell uh, my my kid who is around uh, uh, as a young teenager and, and one of the things that she uh, that she, that I tell her is that the reason that you're doing all of your things here with school, even though it's easy, is to develop good work habits, to develop good, uh, and what we need to develop now is good community habits so that when we get into the harder problems, we're in this process of, of collaboration and with a very pragmatic view on how do we solve the problem at large. And we're all going to have different opinions, so we need to find a framework that allows us to deviate in those particular opinions, let the market work things out, and, uh, and then converge. Uh, in terms, uh, so, so, so what I propose is that we follow a different, uh, we try solving a different problem where uh, designing a CNF is about designing principles and that's a very important problem. But what I propose is that we focus on what does it mean to be cube native, uh, Kubernetes native? And what does it mean to build network functions on top of Kubernetes with a very strong focus on best practices and focusing on something concrete that we can look and, and test and something that in the best case scenario, we're able to attest properties about it with the, with the idea of servicing gaps and what, and what can we improve providing this information as if you want to run a, if you want to run a CNF on Kubernetes or a network function on Kubernetes to be more exact, these are the, these are the type of things that you may run into. You may need to expose certain pieces of hardware into it in a specific way. Uh, there's gaps around NUMA alignment that are still being resolved. Uh, what can you do about it today? What do, you ex what do we expect for it to be able to do about it tomorrow? Uh, and to focus on best practices where if you do a lift and shift, then these are the problems you're gonna run into. If you, if you redesign your architecture to be horizontally scalable and to run in a container then, uh, and to provide information to Kubernetes so that it can orchestrate you then what uh, what benefits do you do you get from there? And that does not mean the other approaches are invalid. It just says this is how we do it in in Kubernetes. If you were to follow best practices, uh, you can deviate at your at your own risk, uh, but at least at least understand what the best practices are, and you can make an informed decision so that so that you're not deviating out of out of I don't know knowing and, and the purpose of it is is to accelerate the uh, is, is to accelerate the space. Um, and then in time we can expand this out. Like one of the big questions is where do we draw the line between application orchestration versus infra orchestration? And I'll use an example, uh, enterprise example. That if you install the test, the test will run run the underlying pods for your system, but the test itself will actually run the orchestration of MySQL itself. Uh, and so there's there's an infrastructure versus application. There's certain things that only the only the application can know how to do because we're application specific, and uh, we have to define where that particular line is uh, and make it uh, make it very clear. Uh, rather than saying Kubernetes will orchestrate everything for you because it, it clearly won't. Uh, there's also questions in terms of what do we want to do about uh, about multi multiple vendors on on the same infrastructure or type of infrastructure. So how do we how do we set this thing up so they have a, a more uniform com, uh, composable, so that they're composable and that they're they're consumable? Uh, again, from a best practices perspective, and it's not clear that there's a best practice that's that's fully surfaced yet. So we may end up having to publish multiple things on this space, but uh, uh, and identify that that is a gap uh, and uh, and future things that we can work towards it. Um, and how do I ensure that they're compatible with each other? Uh, lib the litmus test could be swap out one vendor for another uh, with a vision towards zero touch automation. So in sh uh, many of these things we can push into the CNF test bed, which already exists today. Uh, and that could be an initial focus to help codify and test some of the best practices. Uh, uh, and in, so in short, those are some of my some of the thoughts that I that I have. I don't have anything else in these particular documents, um, but I, I want to put this as a, as an as an initial framework. I have uh, actually one comment. Oh. I think uh, I completely agree with the conclusion few slides. Now, the one thing that I wonder about 
since we are trying to define the actors, which is you have a slide who says number five, I think, who are the actors? And the problem I see here that we're trying to find, define the questions in their behalf. So maybe one approach we can do is once we define the actor, let's ask them, let's ask them what is the main pain point that you would like us to solve. It might be worth doing a survey targeting only those actors that we're trying to target and ask them really, what are the three pain points you find that we can help you solve? And this way actually we can uh, create a roadmap for this group by trying to really do it in a way that's serving the customer themselves, the audience for this work. Yeah, I completely agree with that as well. And, and I, I put, I, had, I wanted to have some continuity in the slides, uh, but if, if you look at this, like nobody really wants uh, S, like something like SR, SRIOV, like you, you want it from an implementation detail, but what the, cons what the customer really wants is a faster system or a connection into a very specific system or additional properties that are being added in by their top of rack switch. They don't really care about the actual mechanism itself. And so, so I think like, how do I consume this particular thing versus some of the operational details that we, there's, there's things that we can, that we'll need to, to, uh, to work out with that. And I think when we start asking some of these types of questions, like some of these type of, of differences or challenges to our assumptions will, will pop out. And I think uh, doing a, some type of a survey of each of these types of groups, like if you're a CNF vendor, what, 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 are your, what are you trying to do? Like, what is your value proposition? Why are you doing this? What are your pain points? And we can come up with a variety of different questions to, to ask to help us in, inform these type, of, uh, these type of things. Uh, and as we, and, and these ones we shouldn't, like the, these, some of these particular questions, uh, there's different forms of this question depending on where you come from as well. Like if you're a CNF vendor and you're saying, how do I consume the network versus you're a customer and you're saying, how do I consume a network service? Uh, the two very, very different things, even though it's the same question, even though it's the same words in, this, in, in the question. So I, I, I think, um, you know, the question that this slide provokes in my mind is, is um, does it make sense to perhaps have either different subgroups or have even different work groups um, as a, I, I think, I think, I, I keep thinking that we're, we've got to the point of audiences and, and actors, we have different people who want different things out of this work group. And that's why we keep getting stymied on the charter. Um, and to me, this slide really crystallizes that. And I'm wondering if it might make more sense to, to um, reformulate what exactly we're trying to do in these terms. Yeah, it, it, it may make sense. Uh, one of the things that, uh, uh, and this is one of the challenges that we have as well is in, in the past, and I'll put it very bluntly because I, I, the risk, uh, and please, please do not, uh, uh, no, no one be offended by this specific thing. I wanna be very clear because this, this highlights a problem. Uh, when you look at the ratio of, uh, of different groups that are here, like we still don't have very many CNF vendors. There's still very small number, a very small number of them because the, the, the infrastructure has not been ready for them to really build and deploy on. And there's been an increasing amount of them doing things internally. Uh, when it comes to the service provider and operators, there's only a very small number of them, but there's a very large number of, of uh, vendors that are within the community. And one of the problems that we, that we run into is by throwing everyone into a single pot and saying, okay, have fun, uh, that when you have uh, an operator say something and that the vendors don't necessarily agree with, there's 20 vendors ready to rebut uh, at that particular at that particular path. And what ends up happening is that we scare away the the operators in, in the process. And it's not a it's not a function of any particular group trying to to be uh, mean to to them. Uh, it's just that everyone wants to be heard, which is fully understood. Uh, and simultaneously, it's it's a function of the process. And so, rather than trying to blame people and say, okay, well, what can we do to 
fix the process to make sure that every of the major actor that's here gets a voice, uh, gets their gets their opinions heard, but at the same time, we, we don't establish it in a way that uh, that overwhelms any any of the single actors, especially if those actors are are smaller in number. Uh, and so that's something that uh, we have to be very very careful with in, in how we how we organize the, these particular these particular paths and different. Uh, a different working set of uh, subgroups could help with that, but there's also the risk that they become isolated. So if, if we take that approach, we need to make sure that uh, that we have somewhere that uh, the work groups meet together uh, on a regular basis to to describe the high level things they're doing and to make sure that uh, that all parties are heard. So I, I think you really did a good job at underlying the the issue here because in the end we we list all these actors but we're going to be dictating or guiding the CNF vendors in, particularly, in particular. So they're a little bit cornered in, in the way we're, we're building things right now. If, if I join the brainstorming, maybe I have a, one suggestion of a way out of this is instead of thinking about the individual actors, uh, the, maybe the scope of this work group can be specifically on integration, that is, our job is not to tell anybody how to build a CNF, but rather to integrate all these various actors together and make sure that they have ways that the operator, the vendor, the platform provider, uh, that everybody can work together in the best possible way. Yeah, and I think yeah, that's I, what I was getting at when it came to you know, you know, we've sort of danced around the idea with best practices, which is unfortunately not terribly concrete and hard to action. Um, you know, we, you talked earlier about uh, vendor lock-in, and as I as I mentioned earlier in the in the chat, you may not have seen it, Fred, because you were you were um, presenting um, the fun the what 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 vendor lock-in is really a proxy for is the challenge of integrating new things and the general challenge of interoperability. And I think that's what, what Tal was just pointing at as well, and also what this slide really gets at. Um, and so I think that, that Tal is, is right. And, and again, I, th I really think this slide crystallizes you know, what we're all really struggling with. They're, they're separate but related things that build on each other. And fundamentally, what it comes back to is how do we integrate and how do we ensure interoperability? And if we can, if we can focus on it, I think, from that lens, as opposed to, you know, how do you, you know, the, the specifics of how something is built or something like that, I think that, that that gets to what everybody really needs here. So we're, we're okay. a few um, minutes over, is, yeah. is there something actionable you want to do? And I'll leave it well, to Taylor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I want to make sure we close here and then we can, um, we'll, for sure, next week, planning on, on having a call. Um, I think the week after, we may have two gap weeks. And then in January, we may go to a <clears throat> twice a month type of um, call. Um, the I think the focus right now is going to be what you've presented, though, Frederick. At, and that's where the charter and everything else has kind of um, gone to. Um, it's not that we may not expand later, we can always adjust, but looking towards um, something more actionable, I think is gonna be easier if we have a narrower focus. So this, uh, what you're calling cube native or Kubernetes native is implementations of the cloud native. And I, I, I think as far as the testability, that's gonna be part of the proposals. So there's a, if, um, if anyone's interested in trying to help with this, that would probably be one of the first areas, trying to take an idea. Like I, I posted one in Zoom um, the, about uh, containers dropping root privileges, which is actually part of the OpenShift guidelines, um, if you look at, at those guidelines. So coming to something and then giving references on why this is a practice, how it can be testable, that's part of it why it's valuable to telcos. That's where we wanna center the discussions and then come back and go, okay, is this actually something that is gonna solve a telco's problem? Is this something that's gonna benefit a vendor because they can get something to market faster, whatever. 
what what are the drivers all around that? That's where we want to start centering on putting forward those, um, whether it's a simple idea or something existing that you go and 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 looking at the docs. Um, but I think otherwise we need to continue with this conversation and maybe some new actually view some of the proposed best practices um, for next week. So I, I, I want to maybe finish with one words that someone on the call early in this call said it was about um, is the the best practice or the requirement or whatever you're looking at, however we want to call this, does it is it worse or better? That's what we're talking about in this. Most of them, I don't think will be requirements. Um, for if you look at Jeffrey said, the service providers are going to have different stacks. So they will come up with the requirements and work with each vendor. But that's going to be a selection, hopefully, of if we have best practices that are useful, they can select what they want a la carte. What we're going to allow help is, are you doing something that's worse or better? Does it help with interoperability between the applications and interoperability for a certified Kubernetes platform or not? And I, I think that'll go with what you were saying, Lisa, and everyone else. Interoperability is, is definitely a, a key point for Kubernetes. Thanks everyone. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, Bill. Bye.